Alright, I'm just gonna like go film. Just so. No, I'm just. Whoa, whoa, I'm sorry. <laughs> Facts. It's okay. not wrong. So, who are you guys? I'm Kyle, I'm 17, and I'm in year 12. I'm Lewis, I'm also 17, also in year 12, and together we're the co founders of Atma. What's Atma? Atma is a mental health brand that Lewis and I have started, but I see it as more than that. Um, I don't see it as just two guys just sitting here, disconnected from everyone, just doing all this stuff for mental health. I want it to be, and I think Lewis does as well, and, and we're really aiming for it to be a, a community based thing. So, you know, getting people involved, getting, you know, peers involved around us. So it's not just us talking and us doing things and no one else is really involved in it, it's everyone actively playing a part. Yeah, we see Atma as a, as a brand with you know, a lot of potential for us to do things like motivational talks, which is what the original plan was, uh, and fundraisers like what we're doing at the moment, podcasts. But eventually we want Atma to grow into a, its ability to run peer-to-peer -peer programs and hopefully get the community involved at a deeper level rather than it just be Atma doing projects. So what's the word Atma mean? Atma refers to the self behind the ego, so your true self or spirit, whatever you'd like to call it. Yeah, kind of like, yeah, I think spirit's the right word, as it's the meant to be the thing that sticks with you through everything. So what are some personal experiences that the two of you have had with your own mental health and how have you coped with those? Well, I've experienced severe depression and in 2018 I was diagnosed, but um, I, I kind of suffered with similar feelings to that. I got diagnosed with throughout my whole life and it's something that I've experienced for a while especially feeling alone feeling like no one understood my problems um, and just you know feeling really insecure about myself self-doubt a lot and it kind of took me a while to start working on it but in 2018 um, you know I started working on myself a lot from I guess mindfulness and meditation um, if you'd like to call it so kind of stepping away from my thoughts I guess starting to challenge my thoughts um, not just believing them for what they are and that's how I really started working on myself. That's exactly what Kyle and I really found that we had in common, was our way of challenging our own negative trains of thinking. I myself found I was plagued with insecurities and anxieties surrounding my performance with school specifically and also my relationships with people and where I stand with people. And again, like Kyle was saying, I found through my experience that disconnecting from my thoughts, using mindfulness to actually acknowledge those negative thoughts when they come in and to say, go away negative thoughts has been a really big stepping stone in me, you know, starting to improve and starting to get over those anxieties. Although, I think Kyle and I can both agree with this, we're not perfect and we've still got a lot of issues and still a lot of things that we're trying to improve on. Beautiful. So, um, what are peer-led programs and why is it important to support them? I see peer-led programs as, you know, people in the community and for us for with mental health kind of stuff, youth helping other youth. So it's not just you know, old men sitting in a boardroom thinking about what would help, you know, us the most. Youth, us, we have the experiences, we know exactly what it's like, so we can connect to each other more. So yeah, using the connections that, you know, youth can feel with each other, so, you know, knowing what it's like to really get conversations going in mental health or, you know, getting programs going, to help other people in the community. So the community is helping the community. And <clears throat> Kyle and I really, really believe in these because it isn't a replacement for that clinical support that programs like Headspace and professional psychologists, psychiatrists, GPs, and all of that offer. It's no form of replacement in any way, shape, or form. But instead, it's a alternative method of treatment that we see as something that's really lacking in the community. We don't see this support among friend groups, but on a larger scale, among the community as a whole. And we think that Peer-to-peer -peer programs are an ability for us to stop mental health issues before they even need to get to that really critical level of clinical care required. And we really want to, like Kyle said, get the community involved with supporting the community and try and get some of these programs to be consistent and be a place where people can, you know, go to not feel so isolated and to not feel like they're the only person struggling. I do want to note that it's not, it's not a replacement yeah. for professional help at all, like Lewis said. It's, I see it working together, so the professional stuff is really useful and it's important, but so is the community-led programs and all that kind of stuff, so we need to kind of have both, I think. I think that the youth 
of now is more isolated than ever. Like we're, we're looking at a generation that is growing up texting people instead of calling to organize to catch up and seeing each other in real life. So not only am I, you know, we've got all this, this evil technology as all the old, older generations would call it, but we're also going through a pandemic which is locking us at home. And a lot of these programs and a lot of this peer-to-peer -peer visions that we have is simply a way for people to stay connected, stay a part of the community. We just think that the consistent support and the being part of something is the really important, you know, hole that's missing for a lot of kids. And for, for myself especially, like, this isolation has been extremely hard and this pandemic has been. But having Atma as a project to work on with Kyle, having the podcast as a scheduled conversation with someone to really talk about how I feel, having small things like that have made a, a huge, a significant difference to my mental health, my productivity and my overall well-being. And we see that, that that support from just a friend can be turned into a program and can be turned into something, you know, to offer a almost a precursor to clinical um, care and offer a little like a step of support before it gets that bad. I just think that you know it, it, whilst the professional help is really useful as I said earlier peer-led programs can really help as well because we're able to connect with each other we know what it's like you know and a lot of people would I think a lot of people would agree in that you might feel really alone or isolated in your problems like no one really understands but when you have that community around you of other people going through the exact same thing at the same age you know maybe struggling with school as well struggling with friends whatever it is you're not alone and i think that's also really useful in just feeling like it's okay to feel that way sometimes so um how do you guys hope atma will help others well i think i think there's two ways i see it helping others the one is you know raising awareness getting conversations going i think that's really important you know to kind of remove that stigma around mental health and that stigma around you know speaking up and i think that's a really big part of what atma can do but the other part is you know teaching you guys i guess how to help yourself and i'm not saying it's an instant solution when we can't solve your problems and it might not work for everyone but i feel like a lot of us techniques that lewis and i have learned over the years Maybe you guys can learn them and learn them faster than we did and start helping yourself that way. I see Atma as hopefully not only showing the rest of everyone else that, you know, people struggle and we're still struggling even though we've overcome so much, we're still going through so much and everyone always is. And I think that hopefully people will find a bit of comfort in knowing that and like Kyle said learn a bit from our mistakes and what's worked for us and maybe don't waste your time doing things that Kyle and I did and maybe you know learn some of that mindfulness learn some of that stepping back from your emotions and even just being able to identify actually you know what I can't control these thoughts I can't control these emotions and just going I need to go to that clinical help I need to go to that professional and if Atma does any of those things then it's been a total success no questions asked what do you guys see for Atma in the future, as of now? Well, I see a big thing still is motivational talks. It's something that, you know, Lewis and I are passionate about. I think we, you know, are decent at it. But it's more than just that. I want to start getting programs going. I want to start, you know, reaching out with our ambitions. So we have a lot of ambitions. We have a lot of, we're, we're very ambitious people. We have a lot of plans. Um, we have a lot of, you know, aspirations on what we want to do with Atma. Um, so as we spoke about earlier, we said, uh, you know, maybe a fortnightly thing of where guys can just hang out, um, you know, make it a safe space, stuff like that, just get it going and maybe for other demographics as well. We have a lot of plans in just being able to help people, I think. Yeah, I think Atma has two kind of main directions it's going to go in, which is one is the Kyle and Lewis type stuff, which is, you know, the motivational talks, the podcast, the occasional fundraisers when we've got something that we really want to support. And then there's also those peer-to-peer -peer programs that we really are so passionate about and really want to start. And I think the best example of one that we see as a need for our friends right now is a, a space for guys who to just go to and to feel comfortable being able to, you know, feel insecure and open up about their emotions, but also just be distracted from the rest of the world. And hopefully we can find people to run that for different age groups, you know, obviously for women, like we really see that those starting those community driven programs as being one of the fundamentals of Atma, aside from obviously the Kyle and Lewis projects that we do that's more us related. 
So Lewis and I are doing an Atma fundraiser for Headspace Geelong. The fundraiser is on the 3rd to the 4th of October and we're planning on doing a 24 hour live stream where we're doing various challenges on this live stream based on the amount of money we've raised beforehand and that's things like Carl's already bleached his hair for it and so have I. We're going to dye our hair pink. If we get another 600 bucks we're shaving our eyebrows and you know I might do some push ups and at the end of the 24 hours we're doing a run a marathon run depending on how much money we've raised so we're doing heaps of challenges and all the money is going straight to headspace geelong because we see during covid companies or organizations like headspace that are so fundamental to supporting people really need that support from the community and i think it's not just about the money either, it's about getting that conversation going. So we're really trying to get communities involved. There'll be a raffle um, with a lot of local businesses really chipping in for prizes for a raffle as well. And, uh, you know, by the time you're seeing this, if it's for the Humans in Geelong Expo, it may, the fundraiser live stream may or, already be over, but you can still go donate. Um, and any challenges we didn't make, like get enough money to do on the live stream, we're going to obviously still do. Those challenges are still happening, don't you worry? Yeah, if we get the right money, even after the live stream, we will do those challenges and we'll, you know, show you guys. Um, but if you want to donate, you can go to our social medias. Uh, there will be links there. You can find our posts about the fundraiser or even if you just share it, because I know not everyone has money to donate and that's okay. Uh, you know, if, if you have some money, if you want to, you know, donate, if you want to share it, anything supportive because you're really helping youth in Geelong, I think.